Welcome everyone to Cisco Canada's Virtual Kitchen podcast streaming show. The you know you ever wonder about what you can show that's not food? Well, this ex- extensively talented chef is going to talk about pant liner or pan liners and other th- chef Jeff, you looking at me? You ready to go? Here you go. I'm ready to Here, go. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> welcome, yeah. Doug. Pant, <laughs> pant and non-food <laughs> expert, Doug. I don't know how else to explain this. Yeah. The king of yeah, food. Yeah. We got a uh, tall task. We're going to make this super exciting, but we're going to make Honestly, it relevant to cost savings. We got this, so I feel good about it. I, I You feel good? You yeah. feel good? Yeah. Chef yeah. Jeff? Yeah, I'm ready to go. You ready to go? Yeah. Right, yeah. Ready to go. What are we going to talk about today there, gentlemen? So today, you know, we talked a little bit about what we're how to save money and maybe bust a little bit of this recession. So we're going to talk about some pan liners that um, Handguards has put out. Uh, talking about how if you use the pan liner, you don't have to really wash the pan after. So you're saving a ton of water and a ton of chemical that's running back into the system. Uh, they do a full glove line. These are all Cisco branded products. So uh, nice. today I'm wearing the, the gloves that can hold a little bit of heat. So when you're handling hot plates or you're you know, plating nice dishes with some hot food, you can handle mm-hmm. it a little better. And then uh, I'm going to show a little bit of a neat uh, product that's, uh, that's a cook and chill that uh, we're going to use for, we're going to show it how you can use it for different ways in the kitchen, uh, make a new revenue stream for, uh, for some restaurants or, or some caterers, but also a way to save a lot of food, keep it for the next time you need it. And uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll head forward with that. Wow. Do you know Doug, what? Are, yeah. Doug, are you going to bring some jazz to this too? Yeah. I mean like jazz fingers, dance, I'll do whatever I have to do. But <laughs> so, you know, I'm a passionate packaging guy. I've been spent most of my life in packaging and food service. Yeah. And I can't say my mindset was always on cost savings with food, with non-food. Yep. And uh, the more I've thought about it and the way hand guards deliver this, we're going to talk about true metrics of how packaging can impact uh, food cost and uh, save, save restaurants some money. You know what's interesting by this, and actually I'm very happy you guys are doing this because it is an area that we tend to not look at and people abuse chemicals, they abuse those rubber gloves, yeah. they don't use the liners you're going to share with us and all these different things. This is a space um, that I think a lot of money gets wasted tremendously yeah. and no one really you know, keeps an eye on it or really has the discussion like we're going to have today. But you know what I'm going to do is you're lucky I have a nitro glove commercial I'm going to run and then we'll come back and then oh, guess we're beautiful. On. We'll see you in a bit. Oh, I tee that up pretty good. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. Boom. Right. Well, segway is what it's called in the industry. <laughs> Thank you. We'll You're be right welcome. back. Cisco Classic High Performance Nitro Gloves. Cisco Classic High Performance Nitro Gloves are great for back of the house tasks such as chopping and slicing, working around moderate heat, or customer facing operations. They offer an elegant look and superior protection for any culinary application where touch dexterity, cut protection, and presentation are key. Cisco Classic High Performance Nitro Gloves have superb tensile strength plus a flexible form-fitting design. They are an ideal barrier protection when working around moderate heat, oil, and chemicals. They can be used for cleaning and sanitizing in the front or back of the house. They're available in black and cobalt blue for any HACCP programs. They are great for detail-oriented tasks and are compliant with all FDA regulations for safe food contact. Nitro gloves offer the right protection for the wearer when performing precision tasks that require long wear and a fitted grip. Cisco Classic High Performance Nitro gloves are available for order today. See your local Cisco representative for more. Now, I'm happy to ask you both of you a question. Did that just stick for you guys, or was it playing Playing perfect for me? Was it perfect for me? Yeah. 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 I know the one thing I know about you, Jay, is you're yeah. big on the black glove. I love how cool they are. Yeah, yeah. 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 black glove. And, and you know what? The, uh, the Cisco Classic High Performance Nitro Gloves are great for back of the house tasks. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
concept like. of gloves, right? Like we're talking about uh, saving money like. in your restaurant. Like, mm-hmm. uh, like, like, Changing your gloves on a constant basis, so it saves a lot of money. In so you're telling me you can grab one stuff with those? You can grab more. You can grab. You got to check. You got to check. Sorry, we had comments coming in that we we can't hear uh, because of the music, so we just turn the music down. For you, Jeff, I know you like your music and you like dance and all that stuff. Is that a deep fryer behind you too? You know it is. Yeah, that's fryer? my which which side of it. It's always opposite. That's my deep fryer. Nice. Yeah. Nice. All right. So, what are we doing next? What are we talking about next? So, I guess we could talk about the pan liner since I've, I've got something in the oven going. Yeah, um, that's good. And so is this normal? Be, I've never seen this before. Is this normal? People use pan liners. I was calling them oh. pan liners yesterday. I was advertising. <laughs> yeah. So I just got the pan liners uh, in the mail. So basically it's a sheet. I'm going to pull this one out quickly and different sizes. And of course they come in a roll, right? Huh. And this just goes on your, sorry, this just goes on your pan and lines the pan. So depending on the size of your pan, so I'll show you what I've done now. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, no issue. So, so this you gets away the, the poor. Turn my back for a sec. This, this is the poor dishwasher, Doug, sitting there scrubbing the for hours and hours. Gone. You know what? I'm going to probably blow you away with a, a true cost analysis of a pan liner versus washing. So I'm going to let the chef do his little deal and show you. But 
these things come in full pan, half pan, thirds, uh, six. So they're, uh, yeah, pretty. So they come in different sizes too. Yeah. And up to 400 degrees, right? It is a true back of the house product. You're not going to bring it out front on a, in a chafing pan. Um, it's a back of the house product. Okay. But, uh, how high does it go up? About over 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Pretty impressive. And they and they don't contaminate the food. They don't. They don't no. do anything. No, they got a, it's made of nylon and it does not contaminate the food. So all really? FDA, FDA compliant. Yeah, it's one of those optical things, right? You think plastic heat goes contaminates? It's obviously not. Yeah. So here's a great example with Chef here. So here we are, right? So yeah. this I had baked this butter chicken for about half an hour before the show. Um, there's the pan liner. Uh, and that was at 350 in the oven. So, so it doesn't go on the bottom. It just goes on the inside. No. Yeah. It goes on the inside of the pan. So now when I pull the butter chicken out, I just pull the liner and put the pan back on the shelf. Shut up. Let's see it. Okay. Let's see that. I don't believe you. Jeff, you do it and I'll give you a, I'll do I'll, I'll, some background. I'll, how successful I am on pulling this out. Right? Yeah. Let's see. Let's see this technique. Okay. Let's <laughs> see. Okay. That could be great or bad. <laughs> Now, Doug, you were going to give me a weird stat. Is there yeah. a stat on this too? Yeah. So we've done, we've created a uh, cleaning calculator versus a liner. A calculator. cleaning calc. Do you have a cleaning calculator? Yeah, no a way. Cleaning calculator. This, the technology is incredible in non-food. So essentially what we did is we took into consideration the cost of a liner. So we, we called it 75 cents for the sake of this exercise. And then we talked, talked about labor, energy costs, chemicals, uh, all those things. And then we took the scenario of using a liner. And we assumed okay. that you would cut, uh, clean 20 pots per day. And I think that's a pretty, uh, you know, it's a sure. pretty modest yeah. number, right? So Very you think modest. of that, right? Yep. You think of yep. uh, some of our other people and what they go through. So let's say 20. The cost of liners annually would be somewhere in the range of $4,000. The cost of cleaning would be closer to $15,000. There's a potential to put true dead net profit to your bottom line of $11,000 by using a liner versus chemicals, time, labor, energy. Um, you know, how about just having the time for a pot to sit there and soak just to be able to get clean. So it's one of those little tiny things that really impacts your operation from a Holy financial smokes. perspective. Yeah. Wow. Jay, I will, get you you, I will get you a cleaning calculator and you can play around with all you want. Uh, yeah, I do. That's crazy. So Jeff, let's see your, let's see it, buddy. You didn't go over there and scrub. I poured this out. Of course I got a little on the edge of my stupid pan in the end, but this is the, you know, I poured it out somewhere yeah. and this is the pan liner. So, uh, and I'm wearing the black gloves, by the way, and this pan is quite warm and it's comfortable. So here we are. God. So now every, I take this out and look. <laughs> right. I was going to say every mom needs this. <laughs> That's a good call. <laughs> is that a good yeah. call? Yeah. We need to sell these to moms because. Yeah. All those yeah. scrubbing when I was a kid, right? Especially turkey and all those things. Oh. Yeah, and then your turkey tastes like the lasagna from the night before because you couldn't get it clean, right? <laughs> now, can you use it with sauces? Can you use those with sauces like gravy and other Absolutely, things like yeah. that? Like I would say really? if, you've got your, if you've got your gravy or your sauce pre-made and you're yeah. maybe setting it up inside a bain marie for the day, yeah. why not, right? Yeah, and, and there's a circular inset, uh, Jay, that fits more of that crock pot uh, bowl style. So. Oh, okay, so yeah. like the bowl yeah. style. like Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, wow. so I think, you know, and Doug hit it, hit the nail on the head about, you know, saving costs. People always think, oh, I buy that, it's an extra cost. But in the end, they're really yeah. saving a lot of money by, by not having to use so many chemicals. You know how much chemicals are now in those dishwashers? I can hardly. higher well, end. Uh, yeah. I know it's at home, so I know, and it wasn't exactly. cheap when I was in a restaurant, and yeah, that was a bazillion years ago. So yeah, right. I can only imagine what it is nowadays. Right, and then also your labor staff is not not there as much as it used to be, right? So you're not. You, you, I always say there's some some areas you have to really put some checks and balances in because yeah. they're high. I call them high risk areas, right? And the, on the food side, usually it's like French fries, bread, things that we don't perceive the high value to, but it adds up because we abuse them. Um, same kind of thing Absolutely. on this area, right? Yeah. We, we abuse chemicals. We run those dishwashers. We put everything under the sun in those dishwashers. We run them all the time, not thinking that that's money every time we run it. And um, those pots, how many times? Here's, here's the thing. 
so many horror stories I have about this, and this is a good topic, is that how many times did we run a pot through a dishwasher in a restaurant that we didn't scrub, that we tried to hope that the dishwasher machine would actually scrub for us? Yep. Then we ran it around. It's like, eh, it's about 60% clean. I'll do it again. Yeah. Again. Again. Right? We all did that. You know, right. and, and well, I would say this as, as an executive chef, you you always catch those pot washers that say that's clean enough. Exactly. And then when you go to use it again, <laughs> you're like, true oh, too. Pot, right? <laughs> I just remember how many times you ran those things through the dishwasher just to clean it, and it was like a little scrubby thing on the side. Now oh, just run yeah. through again, yeah. right? Those are high risk areas, and if you don't have controls in place, and the executive chef's not doing that. And not watching it, they're hoping that it gets done. You need to put checks and balances in place. So that's awesome. I'm actually impressed. And, and you know what, Jay? So on this one, one of the things I'll say is that as, a, as an industry, the segment that is on this, and you know, some of my colleagues were sharing those with me, senior living and long-term care, it's all yeah. the use. The, they, they won't cook without it. They see really? the value. So, you know, so some of the ob- objective here is to share some of this with our traditional commercial restaurants out there. Save yourself some time and labor, and uh, you'll be shocked. So, don't look at it as a cost. Look at it as a cost saver, right? Yeah. yeah. Just look at I some totally of the big hotels or some of the big caterers that are putting out, you know, a ton of pans, like maybe fifty pans of product. That uh, you know that saves you fifty times of running fifty items through that machine. And when you're washing these things, some some of them don't fit in your machine, so it's hand scrub mm-hmm. only. And yeah. if they do fit in, you can only fit two at a time. Well, I know that's what I'm saying. You're running that machine all the time and just wasting money left and right. Going in there, where there, where there's two chafers in the whole rack, yeah. And there, and so if they got fifty of them, they're running that thing twenty five times. I was gonna say, and we just saved a whole bunch of kids' poor arms too, (laughs) right? That scrubbing and every 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 green scrubbing. Out there is like, chef, I saw this thing on TV, and I'm telling you, (laughs) exactly. We're doing this for the, for the dishwasher people. <laughs> you got awesome. that right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What's next? What's next? Yeah. So then we're going to move into what's called the uh, the uh, cook and chill bags. That uh, cook and chill said. bags. Okay. I got lots of questions on this, Doug. Doug, I'm sure you got some cool stats. So these, come, stats in, on this these come in a whole bunch of different fl- sizes. So I'll just kind of introduce them and then we'll talk about them. So this one, I only got the really big ones. So I sealed this mm-hmm. one cut it and sealed it down the side. So like, just say like, I'm a notorious butter chicken guy. Yeah. And I have a kitchen and I'm doing butter chicken like nuts. And people are saying to me, Hey, I really love the butter chicken. Can I buy some to take home? Now with these, with these, uh, with these bags, you can put the hot product in, seal the top, mm-hmm. put it in your freezer and they freeze right in without spoiling in the freezer you take them out and you sous vide them and they can take okay. them home. So say I so have a restaurant use, and everyone you... loves what I'm making. I can put this in this bag, sell it out the front of my restaurant. Now I have a second revenue stream. Soups, stews, butter chickens, anything you want. Rices, uh, yep. quinoas, all those things. And you have them all set there. They're just dropped in, ready to go, right? And I mm-hmm. think this product right here is awesome. And if you're going to sous vide anything, here you go. The bag's already made. I was going to say that's, that's for sous vide. Yeah. Yep, sous vide. Wow. Yeah. You remember we talked last time, We I told you the story of a, a you know one of our big chains was portioning their nacho chips because that's how sensitive they are and aware of, of food costs today. So this mm-hmm. is a great example of having exact portions, you know, whether you're in a commissary kitchen, ghost kitchen, um, you know, the portion uh, control is much better. And to answer your question, I don't have actual calculator for this, Jay. That <laughs> okay. is in progress. I'm going to work on the calculator for you. Right. Yeah. That's so, Jay, cool. Jay, you've been in the kitchen long enough. You know that there's that danger zone with hot food going yep. cold, right? The five degrees Celsius to yep. like 57, or if you're doing Fahrenheit, 41 to 135. And, um, you know, this is this gives you the ability to get that product in a cooler super fast. Yeah. Because they, they 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 withstand the hot product in it, the warm product in it, seal it, get it put away, so you're not in that danger zone for very long. And then when you're cooking it, you're cooking it from frozen in a sous vide, right? Or you thaw it, or you thaw it, or you bring yeah. it up, thing, and you pour it in a pan, and you can reheat it. 
No, so, Jeff, and, does can you put raw in there? Can you put raw products in there and freeze it? Yeah. Too? Yeah. I mean, you know, to me, like ground beef, like I mean, ground beef, why, like, I, you know, I, I want obviously love the product, but why would I put raw product in there if I could have something I could use somewhere else? But yeah. this is basically something that you could put a warm product in and have it ready to be used in a while. I don't want to, I don't want to steer people like they need this to put cool product in right away. Like if you're going to mm. put some carrots in there, but you're right. If you had, if you wanted to keep something a little longer and you had the, the ability to vacuum seal it, this is what you'd use, right? Oh, okay. Even if it's a cool product. Yeah. Um, now do, do they come in different sizes? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a, there's a whole on the, on the POS, there's a, a whole. It's a uh, pint, garden. half gallon, gallon, one and a half gallon, two gallons. Oh yeah. So uh, quite, quite a big option there. So if you want to now, single serve, yep. I'm assuming most restaurants will have a sealer nowadays, right? Yeah. Vacuum they sealers. Yeah, and we didn't and have those back then. The most exciting part is, is creating this new idea of maybe selling stuff out, the, out your, and you've seen it. You've seen people make their sauces and jar it and they have it on shelves at the restaurant. And they say, if you like our marinara sauce, uh, let's rock and roll. Right. So yeah. this is an option for you to sell this. You have it in a sort of a showcase, a freezer showcase. You have it people after they're done eating, they say, Oh, I'd like to take some home for my meal in the next week. Perfect. Well, yeah. you know, it's interesting by that is that we actually had a show last week on restaurant side hustles and we had the, we had the two top ladies that help restaurants with that. So if yeah, you so. watch the side hustle show yeah. last week, you'll still talk about like some of the rules and regulations in most restaurants. They said to start a side hustle, like jarring stuff and everything else. They're 50% already there. They have the kitchen. Yeah. They're, they're already certified. All these other things that to just get in your packaging and your labeling is, is actually pretty easy according right. to them. So you could do that easily. And to your point, Jeff, why not? And most people are supporting local in a really great way nowadays that they may like your sauce or your butter yeah. chicken. And and I, haven't had your, I haven't had your butter thing about selling frozen is the regulations. I mean, they're strict, but they're not as strict as selling like a take home meal, you know, or like yeah. temperature wise and stuff. It's frozen. So it, it allows you to keep things in a lot, a lot easier. Yeah without all the regulations being thrown at you. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you promote it and you merchandise it. And if it doesn't sell, it gets used in your kitchen after. Right. Boom. So yeah. So, you know, you're not looking at a waste situation. So. Yeah. Well, you've interest me there as well. There That's you go. three in a row. Uh, in I row. should just probably just stop. Right. At three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're so, good. We're good. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to touch on chef Jeff? Well, I don't know if most people know, but core just sort of, um, uh, uh, melded with TTS. So that's why we've got these new lines. Doug and I are learning about these new lines for the show. Uh, this was one we thought would be a good start, but they are, they're a great company and Doug is a packaging specialist. So I'm super happy to have Doug on the show with me because he knows so much more about packaging than I do. I love the culinary side, you know that. And um, so we're looking forward to showing you a few, a few things from the non-packaging side, right? Well, there you go. Well, it's exciting. If it saves up my restaurants money, let's do it. If it helps them out, let's do it. So great stuff, great tips. And you and I didn't have to drink my Red Bull. No, wow. you didn't. You uh, didn't. Wow. I was looking for it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I was, for, I was about to hit the I'm leaving the shows thing right here in the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the, the show ex yeah. ejection. Um yeah. so anyways, well, thanks again, both of you. Great stuff, great tips, great ideas. Uh, for everyone else, we're back again tomorrow with Matt Rolf. We have a great show with Monte. Is one of the, like he's got a new book coming out. Legend in the industry on coaching people in the industry on the show tomorrow with Matt. So perfect. We're back tomorrow. So, anyways, thanks, thanks again, both of you, and to everyone else. Uh, watch us later and on demand on all our channels. Just Google, just Google SVK, and you'll find stuff. So that's how you do it now, Jeff. Just Google us. Yeah, that's what anyways. I'm that's what you say. All right. Thanks so much. Take care, everyone. Have a, have a great, great day. Day. Cheers. Cheers.